Hello guys, Deb here with Art and Grace. Come on in. Hopefully you guys are having a good day and you can take a break and join in some fun and a little bit of creativity, which always helps our day. So I am Deb, owner of Art and Grace. I'm getting this pulled up on the iPad so I can see your comments easier. Let me know when you're here and give me a like and a thumbs up and a heart and all the things so I can see you. And I would love for you to spread this out so more people can see and take a break in their day. Anybody here? I'm watching for some comments. Hopefully we can get them. Hello, Veronica. You're my first commenter. Glad to see you today. Hi, Charita. Hi, Levada. Now they're coming in. Hopefully you guys are having a good day. Let me know. Hi, Linda. Hi, Anna and Diane. Hi, Deb, VIP in the house. That's right. Hi, Tina. Okay, guys, we are going to paint easy flowers. Now, every time I paint, you guys act like it's really difficult. And I'm telling you, the things that I show you are easy. So if you'll just watch this, I promise, promise you can do it. So we're going to do some easy, um, beautiful, colorful flowers. This is going to be a cone flower. I went blank. I was like, what flower am I painting? A cone flower. Hi, Tracy. Hope you're having a good day. And thank you for letting me switch with Adrian. I know she was having bad weather. You guys, I hope you're taking care. Uh, she, I did not know it was bad in other parts. It's been really windy here and some rain and everything. But today is a nice sunny day. So happy to switch with her. Let's get started. I have a nice little bamboo wood tray. I love these trays. I have two on my dresser right now with all my bracelets. You guys know I make bracelets. And um, these right here, my sweet son's girlfriend always gets me, but I've got them lined up. And then I've got my second one, I have necklaces lined up. I'm doing a third. I may decide to, tr to um, you know, put these like a little candle holder in between. I don't know, but I think I could stack these pretty high and fill them all. So we're going to paint this tray. Hi, Sue. Hi, Sharon. Oh, Diana, I hope you feel better. I hope that maybe just the weather and maybe it will get better. Um, we usually get headaches with bad weather and stuff. You guys continue to come on in and keep, you know, sharing this out and keep commenting. I wanted to show you what I did first. I put down the multi-purpose sealer. You guys know that before I paint on wood or metal or glass, I put down this sealer. I have a good coat. You can see how it's a little bit shiny. That is the sealer. And this will allow my paint to go on really smoothly and have a little bit of tooth for it to grab onto. So it's just a great practice to get in to put down a pre-sealer. This isn't one that you use on top. This is the one that goes underneath. So we're going to get out that. We're going to get out a little white. We're going to get out a little blue. Um, are you talking about the tray, Sharon, or the sealer? If you're talking about the tray, let me think one second because I believe it was Target, almost positive that it was Target not maybe a couple of months ago, if I'm not mistaken. I wish I had, I looked at the back and the tag's not on it, but I, I'm almost positive that it was, isn't the camera flipped? It's not flipped. I did flip it. I must have flipped it back somehow because I sure did flip it because I read Alaska. Oh goodness, it's may not going to let me. Well, for this, it won't matter, and it's not going to let me, I don't think. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, my hat's backwards. Okay, let's get started. This is super, super easy. I almost feel like everybody's going to already know how to paint this, but I'm going to show y'all because surely there'll be somebody on here who does not know how to paint a cone flower. I'm going to take a lot of white on my brush. Let me see if I can get this palette where y'all can see it. Thank you guys for whatever's going up. I see thumbs ups. Um, I'm doing a lot of white and then just a tiny, tiny dot of blue. And we're going to just paint this. Now, I do my stuff really colorful. So if you want yours, um, you know, if you paint something and you like the idea of what I do, copy it and then just use different colors. I kind of like things really colorful and happy. That just makes me feel good when I see it. So we're just going to get this background painted. And I'm just using this light blue. So just mixing the white and blue to get what I want. 
and we'll move down to some green down here to represent grass. This will take a couple of coats so we can just kind of get this smeared on. Let me know how the weather is where you guys are. Is anybody else having, I, I think Adrian was saying it was more tornadoes, not, not really rain so much. So thank you, Sheila. Hi, Jackie. Thank you, Deb, for sprinkling. You guys are amazing. It is cold here. I mean, this is what, you know, they call this like a shacket, like it's a jacket shirt thing. And I don't typically paint in something like this. I try to just wear t-shirts because I usually do get paint on me. So I've got to be really careful. I got this for Christmas and I don't want to mess it up, but I was freezing today. It's really cold here in Texas. Again, back and forth guys, just back and forth. Okay, I like this painterly look, so we're going to have all this brush stroke in it. If you don't and you want it really smooth, you're going to go side to side. So I would be doing this side to side. See how smooth that is? But I don't want that. I want the brush strokes, so I'm going to leave it like I've got it. Now I'm going to take a paper towel. I always have one handy and wipe off my paint into that paper towel, really squeeze it out. And that way when I put this into my water, the water doesn't turn totally messy. You're having a snowstorm, Sue? Oh my goodness, eight degree, no, wait, 81? Okay, Diane, where are you? 81, are you in Florida? I'm trying to think where would it be 81, that's amazing. I'm so ready for spring and we did have a really spring day yesterday like it was beautiful so big surprise you know if you don't like the weather in Texas hang around because it will change doing the same thing where I have a lot of white on my brush let me get this palette back up here and I'm just gonna tap down just a little bit into the green you see that and get this green down here kind of coming up and meeting the blue and I can go more and depending on how dark you want yours, you know. But you can do this on mixed media paper, on watercolor paper, on, um, you know, piece of metal, piece of wood, a canvas. The technique will be the same. So it doesn't matter what you want to paint it on. It's just the, the technique that I'm going to be showing you today. I hope that if you're working that today's not too bad of a work day for you and and just you know I put this post up this morning like I can smell Friday and you know we're that close so hang in there if you're one of those that's working in the office or something like that just you can do it just getting this little background done I'm gonna take a heat gun to this and dry what I have and then we'll come back on top and do a little more great day very yeah it's windy here too Ooh, oh well Carrie I'm sorry about that but glad you have early dismissal like that's kind of one of those hey I'm sorry it's because of a storm but yet glad y'all get to leave early tornado watch in middle Tennessee I'm so sorry well, we need to, everybody pr say a prayer for these places that are having this weather because it's scary and obviously can do a lot of damage. So we pray that it will dissipate and not be so bad. Yeah, it's gloomy there, Leanne. It's still sunny here. It is, a it is getting cloudier though, now that I look out that window. Thank you for the stars, Deborah. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for being willing. My goodness, um, I don't have the stars button anymore. Like it doesn't, I don't have the ability for whatever reason. I don't know, ever since they made that change. So thank you though. Stars are literally like giving us a tip. So we so appreciate it. Thank you for even thinking of it, you know, and wanting to do it. Okay, so a little more white with a little more green and I'm gonna darken this up down here and give it that second coat that it definitely needs. And I'm gonna do a little more color. I'm kind of looking in my in my phone to kind of see how it's looking. Yeah, 
This is um, a great surface, by the way, if you want to try resin art, uh, because see how it's raised? You, this is actually, let me just stop and say, this is actually the perfect surface if you're wanting to do some resin art, because as you, you can paint your design, you can put your glass, pour your resin, and never have to worry about keeping it up on something level so that the, the resin can drip over. It's all contained. So when you see these type of trays somewhere at a good price, and you're wanting to do the resin art, pick them up. This is literally my favorite thing to do resin on just because of that reason. You just, it just makes it so, so easy. I am not going to worry about my sides right now, but I probably will go back and depending on how this looks when I'm done, I might paint them all black, I might paint them all white, I might do a stripe, I don't know yet. So I'm not worried if I make a mistake and like, you know, right now I'm kind of getting a little bit of paint happy over here. So I might see if I can rub that off while it's still fresh, but I can always go back and fix those things. You found this, okay, that's where I thought I got it, Sue, so thanks for confirming that. I was pretty sure that's where I found it, but, you know, when you look all over for things and you pick things up when you're out and about, sometimes we forget, so I count on that tag being there, but it probably, it might have had a seal, of, like a plastic seal, and I might have just already taken that off. I don't remember, so I'm going to add a little more of the blue up here and some white and do my second coat I am giving it this crisscross you know I always say kind of an X motion to give it that artistic painterly look but you can totally do smooth if you prefer and I'm just letting those two meet and then I'll kind of show you how I blend them in in just a second but just kind of bringing that in a little bit into my green But I think these flowers are going to be really pretty against this blue. What's y'all's favorite flower? I have a question. I, I'm so glad I remembered to ask that because I am teaching flowers in my private group. And, and um, so this is kind of a little sneak peek at some of the things we do in there. But um, we did daisies. We did some mixed media flowers Tuesday. Um, what else? I'm trying to think if I've taught anything else yet, or is it all just in the works? Because this is only the, what, second week? What is today? Yeah, second week of February. So, February flowers and birds. March will be more spring things. And the membership does open up March 1st. So, if you've thought about getting in there, oh, well, this is a great time. Great time. I'm just trying to be sure that I like the coverage before I blow it dry. Hydrangeas roses. Ooh, hydrangeas is on our calendar. I like tulips too. They used to be my favorite. They are not anymore. They have moved down the ranks. Um, I used to say tulip was my favorite flower, but I've changed. And I love a really good ranunculus. <laughs> I like all flowers, really. Oh, I, um, I love lavender. I mean, I really do. I don't think there's any flowers that I don't like. Oh, we've done blue bonnets, too. I got to do my Texas blue bonnets, guys. We've done lots of pretty things. Okay, now, now that I've got my blue, kind of how I like it, let me just double check. Except for this little piece right here, blend that in a little. Now I'm going to get a little more of this green. Y'all tell me if you see me getting this on my clothes. I'm trying really hard. Oh, and no, I don't want to get on my new necklace. I made this last night. Do y'all like that? Can you see? It's really sparkly. I don't know if you can see on camera, but... That's another thing I'm teaching in the group. So we do all kind of things. We do mainly art 
mainly acrylic art, resin art, but also we, we try everything. So we do some watercolor, we do mixed media, we do jewelry, <laughs> we've done a lot of different things. So I'm taking that green and I'm going to kind of blend it up and uh, kind of make some grass type shapes and that kind of helps me blend up into that blue. So just with this brush with some green, light green on it, kind of making some grass type motions with this same brush that I've done the background, which is just a flat brush, like a one inch flat brush. Might be three quarter. And it's one of my older ones. It's not even really a good brush. Fabric next, oh yeah, yeah. I used to have, that's a, that, I forgot about that necklace. Isn't it weird how sometimes you're like, where is that necklace? I used to have like a little, it was like a little ball with a little felt thing in there and you could put the essential oils on it. And I can't remember the last time I saw that necklace. So now I've got a little, little bit of darker green that I'm going to come up and do some kind of uh, grass kind of strokes with. And just bringing it up you're letting your brush do the work guys you can see just scrape it up how's that looking does it look somewhat like grass okay now we can start on our flowers so I'm gonna take a skinny detail brush let me show you this is a skinny detail brush it is a number four liner brush but any that has a long thin you know um, bristles to it and we are gonna roll it in our green I'm kind of loading it up with the green and then we will start kind of down here at the bottom and come up so I've got a lot of pressure putting a lot of pressure here now I'm just kind of rolling it up and we can always go back along that line but I don't like a perfect, you know, I don't want a perfectly straight line because that just doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, most flowers kind of do this and they're just very imperfect. So do this one a little taller and then we'll do one more. Now this is going to be hard because these flowers are pretty big. So I'm going to stop and make this one shorter. So hopefully we can get three of these on this little small tray. And then while I have my paint out, I've got this green or the green and I've got a little white here. I'm going to come back on top of this with a little bit of lighter green and just go right down one side of that stem quickly. No big deal. Just kind of give that a little highlight. And I'm going to put out just a tiny bit of yellow. and then combine that with our green. And then kind of do the same just to give it a little interest. You don't want just a solid green. So we can just brush in a little of this yellow and change it up. Are y'all with me? It gets so quiet, you know, when it, it just feels so weird. Hi, Trisha. That's okay, Diane. Don't worry. Thank you for being willing. That's just sweet that you want to. You are showing a stars button for me. Okay, Christy. No problem. You be careful. Oh, uh, Carrie, I hope you will. I try. I would do so much more for them if I could because they know. I tell them all the time. The only reason I'm here online doing this is for you guys. And so I just value all of you. My VIPs are like, they're just, they're, they're definitely more than, uh, I don't know. They're, they're friends, you know, you guys become my friends and I just really appreciate you guys. I'm going to put out a few colors. You don't have to have this many, but because I'm an artist, I have so many paints. So all you really need are basics. You don't have to have all the colors, but this just makes it much easier. So I am putting out lots of colors here. You know, use what you have. You don't have to go buy what I have, but I am putting out 
a couple of different shades of brown, orange, yellow, and purple. And let me, I've got my white over here I can still use. I've got a little bit of black. I just need a dot of black and that's it. And now we're gonna work on our flowers. So I'm gonna take a little bit larger. Um, this is a very small round brush. It does, oh, it's got a number two on it. I started to say it doesn't even have a number. And we're gonna start with the base of our flower. So I'm using the dark brown. The first thing is just dark brown. And I'm gonna kind of uh, draw the base of this flower, the center of the flower. And I know that I, since I've got three bunched on here, this is a very small thing. I'm gonna have one kind of looking that way. So the majority of the petals can go that way. And a cone flower has this tall, you know, kind of center to it. So I'm just tapping down a little bit of brown at the base. So guys, and if you're in my group, you get the tracer. So you don't have to worry about drawing. However, when you watch me a while, you'll see that you can draw these. They're easy. So we've got it facing this way. This middle one we're going to have facing up. So it's just like a half circle, except a little taller, okay? So kind of tall half circle. And just pull your paint up a little bit. You want the base of that flower to be the, uh, the base of the center to be the darkest. And then this one, we'll just kind of have a little cockeyed. So just a little bit going this way, like so. Again, with that dark brown kind of feathering up, okay? Now, I am going to take the same brush, come into my medium brown. Now, if you don't have a medium brown, no problem. You take your, your dark brown and you mix a little white. You might need to mix just a tad of yellow, and then you've got your medium. And now, I'm going to go right on top of what I just did and kind of feather it down. So, just take it, feather it down into what you just did. We're just kind of building up the base of this center. So now we've got, I'm going to hold this up so y'all can see. Takes me a minute to see what you guys see, so bear with me while I just want to be sure. Yeah, you can see. So darker at the very bottom, and you're just kind of feathering up with a little bit of, you know, lighter color. And then we're going to go right into this orange. I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm going to grab some orange and do that as well. Up a little higher with the orange. Not putting very much on my brush, just a little bit, and bringing that orange up so it's getting a little brighter, a little lighter toward the top. Okay. When I teach in my group, I have the camera down on my table so you can really see what I'm doing. Um, you know, that's where we get into the meat and bones and and you guys get tracers and we really, you get to see better what I'm doing. Okay, so now we're at the very top. I didn't have to clean off my brush, I just did it out of habit, but I'm gonna grab some of the yellow and come right on top. This is like a cadmium yellow, so it's a true yellow and come right on top of that orange and it's gonna be the very top of that center. Now this is layer one. We're gonna go back and do this exact same thing again. So if you just got on or you missed some of what I did, I'm fixing to show you again. So I'm gonna let this, this part dry while I move on and do a few stems down here at the bottom. So let me get a little more green. Can't believe some of your up here. I can't believe some of your painters can paint backwards like you are to display it. Oh, well, yeah, I want y'all to be able to see what's happening, and I hope that this helps. I have a lot of people say, I, I love that you do that, so I keep doing it. Um, I am taking this green mixed with a little black and getting like an army green or a really dark green so that I can have a little darkness down here in these leaves. I honestly don't remember what a coneflower leaf looks like, but we're just going to do this. Like literally some simple little leaves. But if you want to look it up or you know, then you, you can do a proper leaf. I honestly just don't remember. So anything's fine. This is 
just for fun and whimsy. It's it's supposed to be, you know, uh, whimsical, not realistic. So um, we're going to do a little bit of leaving there. And then I'm going to come along this side of my stem and add a little bit of that dark going down. Now I could switch to my liner brush is what I would normally do. But for time's sake, since I have it on this brush, I'm just using this brush. But I'm coming along each of these little stems with that dark. Now I'm still got all of that on my brush, but I'm going to grab a little lighter green, a little yellow, and come in and give these stems a little highlight. Don't want them to be quite so dark. But that's a great base and then just kind of feather in a little bit of this into the grass, like so. Okay, now we're gonna go back and start working on our centers again. We're gonna do the exact same thing we did just a second time, so a little bit of the dark. I don't have to put very much on my brush. Can y'all see that? Just start at the dark and put that dark down here at the base, just tapping it in so that it's very imperfect. Tap, tap, tap. On all three. And because you're not having to use a lot of paint, it's really already dry, what we did before. I'm gonna go to the next lighter brown and tap that in. Doesn't have to be pretty. Just blending those two together. And then we're going to a little orange. And I'm actually, like I put the orange on here and then I pat it off because I don't want a ton. You know, I don't want it to just be a solid orange. I just want some orange on here that I can tap in. And now the yellow. Never clean my brush, just keep on going. Because this is uh, imperfect, whimsical art, you can feel good about it. You don't have to worry about it being perfect. So just look at a picture. If you have some in your yard, take a picture and just paint it a loose, you know, imperfect way is the best way I know how to describe it so that you let yourself be rid of thinking it has to be perfect. Okay, let me show you now up close. I'm going to clean off my brush and we're going to start doing petals. Okay, what do y'all think so far? Can you do it? Oh, Elizabeth, that's okay. I wonder, is it just storming everywhere? That's exactly right, Shelly. Organic is not uniform. Thank you for saying that. It's so true. We get caught up in thinking things need to look a certain way and be perfect and they don't. They're still so pretty. And isn't that just the best analogy for us we don't have to be perfect you don't have to look a certain way i don't have to look like you and you don't have to look like a movie star we can all be who we are and be beautiful so thank you patty appreciate you okay so here we go with our petals i'm gonna show you um i think i'm gonna show you a very basic color pattern but then i'm gonna dress it up so all, if you if you want to try this for the first time, maybe just try the two colors. So I've got this purple magenta color on my brush, loaded pretty well. This is a round brush. Um, it came from my detail set, so it's really kind of a you know a small round. And I've just tapped into some white, and I'm going to start here at the base, and I'll show you this a couple of times. And I'm going to press. And I'm still pressing, and now I'm starting to lift up, like so, okay? So I've got my two colors loaded. I'm gonna press, and then lift up. So if you just wanna do the two colors, this is how you do it. It can overlap our um, stem, because obviously if they're out in the wild, that's how they're gonna be. They're gonna be kinda overlapping each other. Press, press, press. I'm gonna stop here 
because this flower in the in the center will be my main flower and I want its petals to kind of dwarf over this one if that makes sense so just stopped just short of this center and then here that one can come over like so so this is just two colors with a very simple round small brush I'm going to do one more coming this way kind of stop there okay let's see how that looks what do we think <laughs> maybe one more I'll do one more over here at the bottom I always say more is more keep going if you're ever in doubt just just do one more whatever it is okay now I'm going to come over here let this dry a little bit while I work on this one same thing the purple with a little bit of white I'm pressing pressing and then I'm lifting up at the end now you guys who are thinking well I couldn't do it yes you can and I know I've got a couple of people on that are in the VIP that can tell you, I didn't think I could do it. I can do it. You can do it. I mean, you see that it's just a matter of press, pull it down, lift it up. Okay. Nothing hard. It will probably take just a little bit of practice. So don't, don't do your first time ever on a wood piece that you want to keep. Do your first few times on mixed media paper or um, scrap paper, you know, copy paper for that matter, whatever you have. Thank you, Cheryl. Oh, thanks, Deb. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Hi, Cindy. Mimi, how are you today? You guys be sure you're following my friends so when you see them come on on a business page check them out if you're not already following okay so i'm gonna take a heat gun to this real quick and dry these a little bit so that when i do my center one it can really be the star of the show and not just blend in so let me put that down okay debbie thanks for coming in for a little bit hope this helps your day i think it's so good to take a little break you know if you only have 10 minutes go in a break room or go outside put on your headphones and watch somebody for a little bit and it really does kind of reset your brain and just make your day go a little better um so now i can't hold this too close or my paint will cook it'll start to kind of like bubble but there we go now we're back in business i'm going to take that same brush and go back into my purple get get it loaded up pretty pretty full and then dip it into my white so purple and white is all I'm using and then here we're gonna dwarf over whatever is in our way because this is gonna be the star of the show and I'll start here and kind of come like so and I will give this center one a little more color than the others so watch to the end and I'll show you what I'm talking about but just letting the brush do the work just dragging it down like so okay so it's kind of dwarfing all the others oh good you love purple yeah it's a i mean i love purple too it's still kind of pink but yet it's just such a pretty color okay so I've got I showed you guys my palette which right here we did the center with all of this so I'm gonna actually use some of this orange in here so I'm gonna take a little purple on my brush but then I'm gonna tap down in that orange so now I've got the purple and the orange and I'm gonna come right back over these petals I am gonna avoid the white and I'm just gonna kind of come and drop that down so a little purple little orange come and drop it down so this one in the center will be my most colorful so that it will draw your eye to it okay y'all like that 
Oh, good, Diane. It's okay. I'm sure we have a lot of silent watchers, and you are welcome here. You don't have to speak. Uh, that's totally fine. I'm just glad you're here, and hopefully you're enjoying and all that. Um, yeah, so no, no problem. And sometimes we're watching. A lot of times I watch other people and do things at the same time, so I can't comment. I might even have my earbuds on, and my phone's not even anywhere near me, so I can't comment. Even if I hear somebody say something about me, I, I'm like, oh, I can't get there. You know, I can't, can't say anything. I'm going to pull a little bit of this green. I still want to lighten up my stems a little bit. So I'm pulling the green, a little bit of white and yellow. And I'm going to come back over these stems. So the green, uh, yellow, and white. And now I'm just getting a lighter shade to come up over these what do you call it? Leaves. I don't want to do too much on the stems here, but I'm going to kind of just pull it lightly. And then whatever's left on my brush, just kind of drag around down here at the bottom. Okay. Thank you, Mary. How are you and Bill today? Give us an update, Mary, can you? I know you probably already have somewhere else, but I haven't seen it, so. Then um, you can, oh, let me check my time. Goodness, almost forgot to check my time. Um, then we can just kind of continue building. So if we want to put the color on the others, we can. Um, I might put a little bit on these others, and then, like, I'm putting some orange, but then I'll kind of come back and cover it a little uh, because I did put a lot in. And I really do want that center one to be the star. But I do love the orange. I've always put a lot of orange with my purple. So just kind of come over what you've already done. And really, I like to go from the inside of the flower out. But it's kind of hard when you're upside down. It just, you kind of do whatever works. So I've got the, the orange on all of them now, but I am going to kind of come back and put the purple with a little white. I'm actually going to mix that purple with a little white and then use that color to kind of come back over. This is the star, this one here. So I'm going to kind of bring this over everything. Okay. And having more of that white highlight, that white, just makes your eye go to it. Okay, let's finish up. Ooh, I'm getting my napkin in my paint. Let's finish up our center. I'm just taking another small detail brush. This one is a short, you know, detail brush. It's not the long skinny one that I had. And we're going to work on these center pieces, the center piece. I'm going to take black just on the tip, so just on the tip, and I'm gonna tap, tap, tap down here at the bottom of each one of these centers. Okay, so just tapping that down. I'll hold this up in just one second and show you what I mean by just tapping it in here at the bottom. This will be a super cute card, guys. We're doing cards in that group in March, so that's another thing we'll be working on is you know, using what we paint and create to bless others. So actually being intentional about making cards. So see the little tap, tap, taps at the bottom of that center. Hi, Backroom Creations, Jeanette. Thank you for the stars, Christy. And I think I saw Stephanie, or at least I see somebody talking to Stephanie, but I think, yes, there you are, the Vintage Pebble, Stephanie. Hello, girl. Um, now I'm going to come back with a little bit of yellow. I had to think if I wanted to put any orange, but I don't. I'm just going to do yellow and tap this in. That's a lot. Tap this in on top. So just little taps of the yellow. So again, layers, right? Acrylic paint does so well with lots of layers. It makes your painting so much more interesting. Remember that when we're children, we pick up a, a color or a marker and we just color 
everything like green, purple, you know, blue. <laughs> but as you're working with acrylic paint, you can do blue and then purple and then orange and then white and then purple and white. And you just continue layering. And at the end, it all just looks so interesting. And you don't notice all the layers, but it just makes it look that much prettier to have all the layers. So just tapping in, and I'm gonna hold this up too because I, I want you to see these tiny little marks I'm making. And it's not hard, it's just the brush. If you don't have a detail brush, try a toothpick or something that's really small and just try making those little marks with something that you have. But this little set of detail brushes is only about $10 and I love them. Um, this is my second set and I, I haven't found anything that I like better so far, so. Okay, I'm now taking my yellow and I'm adding white to it. Hopefully y'all can see that palette and getting a really light yellow. So just add a little more white till it's a light, light yellow. And that will be the top of these little flowers or centers of our flowers. So tap, tap, tap. And then I just kind of work it down into the middle. So tap, tap, tap. just until you like the look of it. Now, do we have time for a bumblebee? <laughs> That's the only thing I wanted to do, a bumblebee. So let's just try really quick. Let's try really quick to do a little bumblebee. Okay, so I'm gonna put it maybe, maybe here. I'm gonna do it in white first, so I'm just gonna kinda get down a little shape of a, of a bumblebee somewhat. Hold on. Now if I had my heat gun ready to go and could dry that super fast, that would be even better. <sighs> Hold please. We gotta hurry. Yes, we're gonna do a quick bumblebee. Three minutes. Oh, now we're probably to two. Oh goodness, I talk too much. Okay, so let's quickly get our yellow on. Thank goodness we've got some mixed here. I'm just gonna take what I've already mixed and get this yellow on. Y'all, come on, send me your good vibes for slow time. We need it to go really slow. Okay, oh, pressure. Now I need some white, and for the wings, I will take white and just a tad of blue, just ever so little bit, just enough that you can kind of tint this white. And then I take just a dot of black, and that gives it that gray color. See, I don't have time to do all this mixing in a hurry. More white, I need a little more white. But you know, it's kind of the color that I use for a windshield uh, on a car or something. So I'm gonna kind of do a couple of wings, like so. I don't even wanna look at the time. I bet I have one minute, ugh. Like so. You know, they've got a couple of wings, so we'll do a Another one here. Like so. Ah! Gotta hurry, Deb, gotta hurry. And then take our black. I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Ah, it says 214. Wait, yeah, 214. And then quickly, quickly, guys, quickly, quickly, you'll do something like this. And then, you know, your little 
all your little legs. I can't finish it because I do need to go so the next person you guys can go watch. But I'll finish this and post a picture. You can do it up in the description of this video. You can see the link to read about my monthly membership. I'd love to have you. And also a link to Craft Around the Clock so you can go support the next person. I'm sorry I traded with somebody so I don't remember who it is, but we'll all go support them in the comments. So I'll see you over there. Bye guys. Thanks for being here.